Hello, I'm David Wamsey. In this video, I'm going to be styling some horizontal rules or separators as they're also called using the Beaver Builder HTML module. And this may be of use to Beaver Builder Lite users who don't have access to Beaver Builder's separator module. And below this video, you'll find there is a link to this page where I've contained some of the CSS I'm talking about here. But if you have access to my free Beaver Junction plugin, which is really just a collection of templates, you'll find there is this template available. And this is what I'm gonna be using for this video. So I'll head over to my dummy site, where I've got a dummy page here, and I've got my plugin installed. So what I need to do is to go over to rows, custom rows, and scroll down. These are in alphabetical order, and I'll find separators here. I'm just gonna drag this in over here. So if you've not seen any of these videos or not used this plugin, then the idea is with most of these is that there are a collection of styles and then you can just drag into your page what you need and then delete the row with all the stuff that you don't want. That's the idea behind it. If you have downloaded this earlier, I tend to update as I'm doing my video. So you might want to update to the latest version because it's uh, changed a fair bit. Okay, let's just go and drag this one in. So it really doesn't matter actually with these ones. Let me just quickly mention. The ones on the left here are really replicating what the Beaver Builder Separator module does. And it's really simple CSS here. And I've put some different styles, but you can drag anyone in, as you can see here. So this is a fairly good match in terms of the color for this and the thickness looks okay but it's centered and I don't want that. So I can easily adjust this. Let's first go over to the general tab here. So you can see that we got a HR here for horizontal rule. And I've given this a class selector of custom dash HR so we can style it. Let's go over to the CSS here. And there we are, there's our selector custom HR. Now, if we were duplicating this over, as long as we've got this content in here with the class selector, then we can just take out the CSS and put it in a global place and have all of these styled from one central place, which is a lot tidier and a good idea to do. Okay, I'll mention one other thing before I skip over it, and that's that I've actually added some styling here, or rather removed some border styling from the HR itself, the horizontal rule itself. Now this may not be needed. It depends on your themes. A lot of themes are resetting the styles that get added by your browser naturally, and which will vary from browser to browser. Now this theme that I'm using, which is the page builder framework, it doesn't seem to zero out the styles there. So I've done it here. In most cases, you might not need it. And generally this is gonna be something you might store globally anyway. Okay. Let's talk about the rest here. So it's really straightforward. I'm sure you'll understand this by just reading this. So width, we've got this at 50% of the available space that we've got here. Obviously it'll adjust responsively. Let's put it down to 25, I think. Just make it a little bit smaller. And I don't want it centered. I've got this margin zero auto, which is centering it here. And I want to float it. So I can float it left or right. I'm just gonna copy this here. And in this case, it is left that I want. So I'm gonna leave it as left and let's move that over. And then the rest here, well, pretty obvious, I guess. The border top, there's our pixel height for it, the thickness, I can just move that down to two, move it back to four. And here we've got solid, but I've included here some stars. So you can just copy and paste it. Let's go for dotted and swap that out over there. There are more styles which are available for horizontal rules, but these are the ones that are included in the Beaver Builder module. And these are the kind of safest because how these display may vary a little bit depending on how your browsers treat them. And of course here, I can just change the color. If I put, whoops, if I put th three zeros, um, there we are, I can change it to black. I think I'm just gonna change that back. Okay, that's it. That's all I can really say about the examples that are on the left-hand side over here. So I'm getting a bit more complex with this here, and there's a link which has a load of examples, and I've stolen uh, most of these or amended them. Um, let me just show you this one, because I'm not going to talk about this. This isn't really a horizontal rule. We're just adding in an SVG here, and then just styling the color of that. 
over here. So you can play around with this one. I just added it in for a bit of fun, but the examples you'll find over here. Okay, let's talk about this one, which I think I would use more often. I'm gonna drag this one in and place this under here. So you can see straight away that it doesn't blend in very well. We've got a background against this icon here, so it creates the illusion that there's a space between this line which isn't really there. So we need to adjust this. So let's go in again. Let's just check here. It's exactly the same thing again, HR with a, a custom selector to style it. And we're using a technique which I've used many times. Now, I borrowed this from someone else, so thank you to Harry Roberts. I think I've changed it a fair bit from his, but again, you'll find it under that collection. So what we want to do here is we want to style this icon a little bit, the background. And I'm using a trick, which I've talked about lots of times, to add in content that doesn't exist in the HTML. And this is this pseudo element of after or before. So you can add in this content, which I'm doing with this icon, as you can see here. But the first thing I want to correct here is the background, because I've set it to match this one. And I need to get a good position for this, don't I really? Ah. Well, you'll just about see it. I'm going to change this to white. So I know that's three Fs here. And that looks a little bit better. Now, I've got here with our padding, so it's top and bottom here and left and right. So I can, let's just put this a little bit extreme. I don't know, um, 19. You can see it moved. So it's put a little bit more space in between the icon there, really just more space around the kind of background, as we can see here, or around the icon itself. Okay, I'm gonna move that back to 10. That's pretty much it. Let's just, just to show you this works. I've got one prepared here. I can swap this out for some other glyph here that I'm using. Let's just go and swap this. And we just wanna make sure that we don't lose our quotation marks. There we are, we've placed in another one so we can change our style in there. I've included, I think here, yes, a link to where I go to get these. That's pretty much it. Let's change our width now because 100% is too much across there. And we can do that here with our custom HR. We've got that set to 100. What we can do here is we can just move this to 50 and that's it. I don't really need to go through the rest of it. This is going to set the width so I could place that one at one like this and set my colors here. I think you'll be able to understand the rest of this by just looking and playing around with it. Okay, let me go on to this, these two now, which are pretty much the same idea. I'll take this one. And mostly it's the same idea, but just a slightly different approach. So let's go into the general tab here. Now what's different here is that we've got this data content of and in here. And what I've also done is in a span tag, I've written the word and because here it, it has semantic meaning, unlike the icon, it was just decorative. And this is going to go into our CSS and screen readers can't read it. So I've put in and. So if you were putting it in between two titles, the screen reader would still read the and. But in terms of what you're seeing here, it's actually the one that's in the data content. So let's just go over to our CSS. And, and let's have a look here. So what's happening here is that we've got the line here is being styled here with a slight gradient running out over there. And let's have a look at our and. As you can see here, the content is not included here, but I'm actually pulling it in from the general tab over here with the data content. So it's picking up on the and. If I was to change that to something else, it would display that there as well. Okay, I mean, I could have done it in a different way, the same way I have done with my icons. I could just do it there, but I'm just showing a different way. So again, with this one, we've got the background. So I'm just going to make this look a little bit better um, by putting the white in there. And again, the spacing again, I can adjust that and give it a little bit more space. There we are, looks a little bit better. Right, the thing that you probably, if you're using this one, you will probably want to adjust the line again. And that's not gonna work in the same way that the other one did. Let's just show you this, because this is all um, being styled here. 
in one place. So it's going 100% width here, but it's absolute position, this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 50%. And because it's left aligned in an absolute position, it's going to go 50% from the left. So everything's going to move over to the left here. So not a problem. We can do a little bit of adjusting. I should have put some notes in, I guess. If this is 50%, then we'll have to adjust here, guess a little bit, but 25% I know will work to center this if we've got 50 there. And if I say move this to, you might have to do this with your eye if it's more complex than that, but if I put this as 75, then now I can half this to 12.5 and again, that's going to do that. So that's pretty much it. The rest I think you can work out for yourself um, with the borders and the, the, the that we're using for styling this. Okay, I think that's it really. I'll leave that. One more to cover is this same idea with all of these three here. Uh, so um, actually I'll leave that in place. Let's just leave it where it is and I'll talk about it from here. So again, just straightforward there. Uh, we just got a selector and a HR rule in there. And if we go over here, it's much simpler. So I'm just centering all of this as we would do with text. And what I've got here is my content and I can just adjust this if I want less stars or put something else in. And pretty much that's it. And just in this case, to, set, to give the space in here, I'm just using letter spacing with these two. Give that a little bit more spacing between each of these icons and that I think is all that I need to cover in this video and maybe add into this there's another one here which is uh, a nice little separator I don't think I'll go into this one because it's a bit more complex but it has a nice little effect as I say probably want to look at these and maybe build up your own library of these Anyway, enough for this one video. I hope this was useful. If it was, then as always, would you please give me a thumbs up on YouTube because it helps me. And if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe to the channel and feel free to share my content as much as possible because it's, it's nice to get the views and know that it's worth doing them. All right, thank you very much for your time. Hope you have a nice day. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.